Hi, it's Wendy Van Workham. Welcome to another episode of our Digital Content Club. This one has to do with this wonderful treat, popcorn. Americans consume over 15 billion quarts of this whole grain good for you treat, and that's around 47 quarts per man, woman, and child. Now, corn is a t popcorn is a type of maize, and it's a member of the grass family, scientifically known as Zia. But this popcorn didn't always look this way. Believe it or not, popcorn has been popping in the Americas for around 9,000 years. Here you can see what a cornfield looks like today, but as I said, corn didn't always look like this. The original plant that corn evolved from was known as Teosente, and it grew in South Central Mexico. It is believed to have been desert domesticated by the Aztecs. While they domesticated the plant, it went from a grassy, very branchy uh, plant with a single row of very small kernels and very hard kernels on the top to the corn that we know today. Now, believe it or not, there are actually six different types of corn. These types of corn are classified by the shape of their kernel. The first one is dent corn or field corn. Um, it's almost always yellow in the United States, but there are a few varieties that are white. It's characterized by its dented appearance. The sides and the backs of the kernels have a very horny or hard endosperm. The core of the kernel is soft and flowery and extends to the crown of the endosperm. And I'll show you what a corn kernel looks like inside in a minute. 93% um, of this is used for animal feed. Next, we have our sweet corn. Sweet corn is the standard sugary corn that we love to eat. Uh, what makes it different is from other types of corn is that its sugary gene prevents the sugar from converting to starch during the endosperm's development. Instead, the dry sugary kernels become wrinkly and glassy. So sweet corn is always eaten while the ears are in the immature milk stage and the kernels are tender. Then we have our popcorn. Uh, popcorn is very hard, and that's gonna be important when we talk about how exactly it pops in a few minutes. The kernels are also pointy like rice and have round pearl, and or round like pearls. Primitive types of popcorn have a thin seed coat, while varieties found more recently have very thick seed coats. Like its name suggests, popcorn is used as freshly popped corn and it is actually the only corn, that corn variety that will pop. Next, we have flint corn. Flint corn has very small, soft, granular centers to their kernels surrounded by a hard, glassy outer shell. The kernels are round and smooth and the ears are long and slender, but there aren't a lot of rows of kernels. Flint corn has been commonly grown in the United States since the colonial times, and it's more often it's found in South America, Latin America, and Southern Europe. Um, and these regions use flint corn for, flat, for food and animal feed. Flower corn is next. It can be traced back its Aztec and Incan origins. It was ground into flour by Native Americans. Flower corn is soft throughout the kernel. It is, there isn't a hard endosperm like other corn types. When dried, the kernels shrink uniformly with very little dent or no dent at all. Uh, once flower corn has been dried, it can be ground easily. If flower corn is commonly grown in the drier regions outside the U.S., the Andean region of South America grows a lot of corn flour, and of course, it's used for food. The final variety or final type is pod corn. The characters of pod corn can vary since it's highly self-sterile. Um, it can be dent, flower, pop, sweet, or waxy. Each kernel is enclosed in a husk, and each ear is also enclosed in a husk, just like other types of corn. And typically this pod corn is used for ornamental purposes, and it's not really grown commercially. Here we have the image of a corn kernel, and it's a cross section. So you can see the germ, which is the baby 
plant. You can see the endosperm around that germ, which is made up of starches that will feed that plant as it's germinating. And then surrounding the whole thing is the pericarp or the hull. And that becomes very, very, very important to popcorn and how it functions. Um, popcorn has a very, very hard hull or pericarp. And inside, in order for popcorn to pop, there needs to be a certain amount of moisture. Too much or too little, and the popcorn will simply not be able to pop. So why is that water so very important? It is so very important because what happens when you are cooking popcorn is you put a little oil in the pan if you're doing it on the stove, and you put the cover on that pan, and the little corn kernels heat up. Because their pericarp is so hard, it enables them to build up an enormous amount of pressure inside. As a matter of fact, the pressure inside one of these little kernels right before it pops can be as much as 130 PSI. My friends, if you ride a road bike, that is the same amount of pressure that is in your tires. Um, What's happening while that pressure is building up is that endosperm, all that starch in there, is liquefying. And when the kernel pops, this gelatinous starch explodes and then immediately solidifies. And that is what you are eating. Popcorn can pop and it can end up twice three times, almost five times its size. So it really is amazing to watch. If you have kids at home, or quite frankly, if you're just curious about science, you should pop it on your stove with a clear lid so that you can watch this amazing thing happen. Now, one quick thing about the pericarp. Um, if you've ever gotten a popcorn hull stuck in your teeth while eating popcorn, that is the leftovers of the pericarp. Most popcorns come in one of two shapes. Here on the left, you can see butterfly, and on the right, you can see mushroom. Butterfly is typically the shape that we get when we are eating microwave popcorn, movie popcorn, and the mushroom shape is a little bit more firm. There's lots of crinkles and a really rough surface, and so often this type of popcorn gets used to make caramel popcorn or popcorn balls or any other kind of popcorn confection or treat. So folks, I hope that you enjoyed learning about these little tiny mini pressure cookers, uh, popcorn kernels, and I also truly hope that you will experiment in your home and pop yourself some corn and watch just how this magic happens. So we hope to see you back here again for some more digital content from Moxie's Digital Content Club. Thank you and we'll see you soon.